Welcome to a short but sophisticated story about the history of progress in human thought and the resulting achievements. In this video, we develop a chronological order of the series of successes in philosophy and science and technology that eventually led to the development of AI. We begin with what was and then lead into the future. Why? Just because it is necessary to know how we got here. Consider what was happening before AI. Before AI, only humans perceived and shaped what we call the real world. Let's ask the relevant question. What has been the defining attribute of an epoch? The answer is that throughout history, it has been the efforts of comprehending and then explaining how the universe came into existence and is organized. Uh, and whenever there has been an era where the existing theories or concepts have not been able to thoroughly account or explain reality and how it progresses, it has led to the spawning of an entire new epoch. Let's go back about 2500 years ago to when the Greek philosophers developed logic and reasoning as a way of investigating the various phenomena of the universe that were utter mysteries back then. It was from their research that mankind initiated the discoveries of nature and science. You can watch our videos on that over here. Here's a fun fact. The word academy is a household name used almost daily in our lives. But do you know it was the name of Plato's school in 4th century BCE? It was one of the first higher education institutes in history. Skip to the last 5 minutes of this video if you are uninterested in such information because there are going to be a lot of these. Still perhaps you are interested in knowing the voyage of AI and that is why you are here. So let's continue. So, when the Greeks and Romans could not understand and explain a natural phenomena or why it occurred, they attributed it to various gods. We are sure you have heard of those mythologies, right? This is their background. For example, why the seasons changed or how the earth experienced day and night or how the seas got their tides. Then when the monotheistic religions arrived and attributed the discourse of the universe to the divine, scientists were forbidden from denying the religious explanations of reality and existence. You know the most famous case of that being that of Galileo? During this time period, the universe was mostly only described and depicted and it was rarely analyzed or explained. This continued on for centuries when suddenly something very disruptive occurred. Guess what? This single technological invention empowered people afar off to read various materials like news, information and literature without the constraints imposed by the church. The resulting revolution in politics and social sciences was the Protestant Reformation which cultivated mass change in the coming years. One of the prime reasons that we revere intellectuals and philosophers is precisely this one, that it was the scholars and the academics who played the vital role in spreading reformed ideas. They fled their cities in order to read, write and speak freely from their government's control so that their knowledge spread more and more. All of this led to the era of humanism during Renaissance, where Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo and Raphael got global recognition in philosophy, politics, writing, art. Please understand that it was from this point onwards that people around the globe began exploring each other's cultures, societies, politics and literature even. And what started happening was the Western civilizations, especially the European nations, found it very difficult to understand, even more so accept, that the other civilizations were also part of the same world or the reality that the Western explorers thought to be theirs only. 
Eventually and naturally, they gathered more and more knowledge from all over the world, resulting in innovations like uh, keeping time, navigating the seas, and synthesizing useful compounds, all of what led to our present innovations and the technology that we see. But stop here and think about the snowball effect that occurred in the 16th and the 17th century. The discoveries by the likes of Van Leeuwenhoek and Copernicus etc. are taken for granted today. Back then though, they created a philosophical vacuum about the constructs of reality, which was later on filled by 18th century scientists and philosophical leaders. Tell us in the comments who you think this is. He was one of the founders of the Age of Reason, which was an epoch uh, where new questions and answers, thesis and antithesis, deductive and inductive reasoning about the very fabric of matter and reality were formed. This epoch was led by extraordinary thinkers who revolutionized our models of rationalizing about nature and its organization. Bishop Berkeley, Baruch Spinoza, and most importantly, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who was the founder of early computer theory and said that monarchs underlay the essence of all things. Now that you have educated yourself on the background of progress in human thought and hence organization, now is the perfect time to set the stage for the development of AI and how it came about. Steps into the picture. Immanuel Kant, who says that the mind is floored by human experience and cognition, so cannot generally grasp the entirety of reality, the thing in itself, meaning that reality is all around us, but our minds have the biases of information skewness and hence can only view and perceive a fraction of the total reality. Think of it this way that feelings come into the way of interpreting facts. But AI is breaking precisely that barrier. How, you may ask? By being logical, not emotional, and being objective rather than being subjective, being based on maths instead of being physical or depending upon its senses. At the same time, when these philosophies were being formulated and debated upon, the theories and philosophies of Voltaire and Friedrich the Great became the foundation of the world order in the 18th and the 19th century. Theories of Immanuel Kant himself became a part of that movement. However, after the epoch of modernity came the Romanticism movement. It offered an approach to reality that was a reimagining of medieval thought. Let's finally move on, entering into the 20th century to the advances in classical model of physics and afterwards quantum physics, which opened a separate Pandora's box on the mysteries of physical reality. Remember, first Einstein presented his general and special theory of relativity, which embarked physical sciences on an entirely new journey of reality's exploration. Next, the work of Wilhelm Heisenberg and Niels Bohr. What was that? The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics affirmed that reality is just too multifaceted to be understood by humans. Humans are very very limited in their perception by their senses. You might be wondering how all of this is related to AI, like how it contributed to the development of AI. Okay, consider the relationship between the philosophy of Ludwig Wittgenstein of family resemblances and machine learning. It says that reality is formed of many many individual parts that do not have any definite boundary but are similar to each other and also interact with each other. Here we would like to quote the page 49 of the book. In the early 21st century, this thinking informed theories of AI and machine learning. Such theories posited that AI's potential lay partly in its ability to scan large datasets to learn types and patterns, for example groupings of words often found together, or features most often present in an image when that image was of a cat, and then to make sense of reality by identifying networks of similarities with what the AI already knew. 
even if AI would never know something in the way a human mind could, an accumulation of matches with the patterns of reality could approximate and sometimes exceed the performance of human perception and reason. Then in this way, AI gets a holistic view of the reality. AI analyzes masses and masses of data to form a picture of reality that humans cannot even imagine to be there. Consider what we have taught you by now and link this to the upcoming part that right on from the time of enlightenment till recent times, man prided itself to be the only being that reasoned in order to understand and hence shape the universe. But the opposite is happening now. Man is not only willing but also trying to concede that position to AI. The tipping point comes when the inventions of AI are new and unique, novel as compared to the technological advancement of the past. For example, previously uh, a technological advancement would look something like that a combination of photos became a video. Automobiles were just carriages that moved very rapidly. But now, computers are becoming part and parcel of each and every aspect of our lives, even of our bodies. This is not merely an extension of the previous technologies. Economics, supply chain management, marketing, localization services, entrepreneurship, everything is in cyberspace now. Do you get our point? Human cognition and perception is being replaced by artificial intelligence. What will become of you then? Today's a cyberspace generation only knows that which is presented to it by AI through search engines and social media. The negative aspect? Information explosion has caused knowledge to be concentrated into fewer and fewer hands, which has the resources to filter the noise from that clutter and focus on what information they need to collect and process. Let's close the video on the worst part that in all this data processing and the fast-paced world that we all live in, the perseverance and the contemplation required to attain the level of reasoning that once made man discover the true nature of reality is now being long lost. What do you think about all of our operations being handed over to AI? Will it continue to do on this with our strategy as well? Tell us that if we are right or wrong in hypothesizing that if we allow that to happen, AI will proceed to shaping our reality as well. This will mean that we are genuinely in the age of AI. And then instead of foregoing our hard end position at the top of the food chain, let's work together in order to develop and deploy AI for ourselves, for our service, rather being in servitude to it. Thank you.